Okay, so in this problem, we are supposed to predict the row value for SN1 and SN2 Savalsis reactions. And so a Savalsis reaction is a SN1 or an SN2 reaction that takes place in a polar protic solvent. In this, in this case, the solvent is going to be ethanol. And so in an SN2 reaction, ethanol is going to react directly as a nucophile, and in an SN1 reaction, the ethanol is going to react with the intermediate carbocation, and in both cases, we're going to make an ethyl ether product. And so we're going to start out with the SN1 mechanism, and the SN1 mechanism is shown in this slide, and we know that in an SN1 mechanism, we have unimolecular cleavage of the carbon chloride bond, the carbon leaving group bond, in this case that's a chloride, and as we elongate that carbon chloride bond, we start to develop positive charge at the carbon and negative charge at the chloride to give us a high energy transition state. And then that transition state leads when we have full breakage of the chlorine carbon bond, so we've separated the two entities, to our high energy carbocation, which is an intermediate along the reaction pathway. The rate determining step is going to be breakage of the carbon chloride bond. And so if we want to think about the row value, we want to know how much influence of the substituent will have on the rate constant, so that's little k, the rate constant for the SN1 reaction or the breakage of that carbon chloride bond. So let's think about the transition state in a little bit more detail. And so we have the transition state structure shown here, and we've elongated that carbon chloride bond, and we know this transition state is going to be late. So this is going to be a high energy transition state. And if the transition state is late, that tells us that we are going to have a significant amount of positive charge development there and negative charge development on the chlorine. And that tells us that we have quite a lot of bond breakage. So let's say we have 70% bond breakage and we have positive 0.7 of a charge on the carbon and negative 0.7 of a charge on the chlorine. We have 70% bond breakage. So that would indicate that those substituents in either the para or the ortho position will have significant interaction with the development of that positive charge. And so that would tell us that we're going to have a steep slope for our Hammett plot. So what we want to think about now is whether we're going to have a positive or a negative slope. And so we know that in this case, our electron donating groups, such as a methoxy, are going to greatly speed up the reaction rate constant. because they're going to be able to flow electron density into the developing positive charge. And that will stabilize that positive charge development. On the other hand, if we have an electron withdrawing group, such as a trifluoromethyl, let's say, Now we know that this is going to pull electron density away from the developing positive charge, which will be very destabilizing. And so in this case, we're going to slow down the reaction. So if we think about our Hammett plots, so our Hammett plots are log plots, so we have log kx, over the unsubstituted, and again, we're looking at the SN1 reaction, 
the Savalis' reaction of these diuromethyl chlorides, where we have our substituent in the pair of position, and we're take, doing these reactions in ethanol, the rate determining step is going to be generation of the carbocation. So when we talk about our Hammond plots again, so here we have our H substituent, which is going to have a sigma value of zero. We have our electron donating groups on the left and our electron withdrawing groups on the right. And so we know that if we have an electron with a donating substituent, such as a methoxy or an amine, the rate constant is going to be faster than if we have the unsubstituted or X equals H. And if we have an electron withdrawing group, such as a, cyan uh, a trifluoromethyl or a cyano, the rate constant is going to be way slower than if we had x equals h. And so this is going to give us a, a steep negative slope. And so how steep is this going to be? It's going to be pretty steep because we have a significant amount of positive charge developed in the transition state and so we can estimate that our rho value will equal let's say around negative 5. So this is a pretty significant rho value. Okay so now if we look at the SN2 mechanism so the SN2 mechanism is shown here, and we know with an SN2 mechanism, the reaction is concerted. And in this case, the ethanol is going to act directly as the nucleophile. And we have no carbocation intermediate, or no intermediate at all, along the reaction pathway. So the rate determining step for an SN2 reaction is going to be our backside attack, of the incoming nucleophile to the carbon that contains the leaving group. So we get backside attack and we're going to kick out our chloride. And so the transition state structure is shown here. And of course we do get developing positive charge because our product the axonium ion has a positive charge on the oxygen. So we have a formal positive charge in our product and we've lost chloride which has a formal negative charge. However in the transition state our charge development is external from or away from where our substituents are. So our substituents are on the aromatic ring, and you can see that the carbon itself has very small amount of charge development. So this would indicate that the influence of the substituents should be small as we get little charge development. And that would tell us that our Hammett plot, again, which is gonna be log Kx over Kh, our electron donating groups are on the left, our electron withdrawing groups are on the right, and x equals h is where we have zero sigma value we would get a very, very shallow slope. 
So typically with SN2 reactions, the slope is still slightly negative because these types of reactions often aren't completely symmetrical. And so we get a small amount of positive charge on the carbon. And we can predict that the rho value for an SN2 reaction is going to be small and it's going to have a negative sign and we'll say it's a probably around 0 0.8 or so. So we have a small amount of influence of the substituents but not very much because we have little charge development. In the transition state where the substituents can interact. Okay, so the question that we have to answer now is which is the correct mechanism? The SN1 mechanism or the SN2 mechanism for the subolysis of the diaryl methyl chlorides taking place in ethanol. In both cases, we would get the same product, though the kinetics would be considerably different, and the influence of the substituents are going to be different. So if we ran these experiments, the product would be the ethyl ether in both cases, And let's say we wanted to see what the rate constant for the reaction was. And we did a series of X. So we're going to do a methoxy, an A, and a hydrogen, chlorine, triformethyl, and a cyano. And if we did that, and we measured the rate constant for the reaction as a function of these substituents, we would find that for the methoxy, the reaction would be much faster, and for the trifluoromethyl, the reaction would be much slower. And if we developed our Hammett plot, we would find that we would get a rho value equal to minus 5.1. And this rho value of minus 5.1 is consistent with the SN1 Solosis reaction. And of course, with the SN1 reaction, this is telling us that we have significant positive charge development and considerable influence of the substituents on the rate constant for 